and uh, we'll sing uh, all three verses of this song, all three verses of this song, A New Name in Glory. We'll sing it out for Jesus. Amen. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white full angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to wrong. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. When the heavens opened and I saw that my name was written down, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, no, oh, yes, it's mine. And the white rolled angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, no, oh, yes, it's mine. With my sin forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never the more to run <coughs> in the book tis written say by grace over the joy that came to my soul now i am forgiven and i know by the blood i am made whole there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white road angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. Never more to run. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's everybody stand, please. We want to we wanna welcome, welcome you. The choir is getting ready to come. If you could turn this mic, this pulpit mic up some, and the shade uh, pulpit on it there. Let's everybody, um, we're going to pray in a moment, okay? Get ready. Choir, as, you, as the choir is getting ready to come up, let me uh, thank you and, and, and thank God so much for you that are here and give you a welcome. Go ahead and turn this up here on the pulpit where it says the pulpit uh, mic there. And just go ahead, yeah, just go ahead, and, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, great, go ahead, okay, good, great, thank you so much. Well, uh, um, the God bless this morning, I want, I want you to know, and, and we praise God so much for it, and how God just met with us in a wonderful, wonderful way, and to thank the Lord so much for this morning, and the preaching, and the singing, and just a time of, just a blessings, being with God's people. And then tonight, being back tonight, thank the Lord so much, we're here. And we thank God so much for our visitors. We welcome you. Thank you for visiting with us tonight. We appreciate you. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Okay. We thank God for the ones watching online and pray a special blessing for those that watch and listen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for your prayer. Bless the choir and uh, bless each listener. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can, you can be seated. Thank you. You, you, you can be seated and you be praying for the choir and Lord, help them. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. You may be down and feel like God somehow forgotten that you were faced with circumstances you can't get through right now it seems like there's no way out and you're going under but god's proven time and time again he'll take care of you he'll do it again
But he's the God of the stars, of the sun and the sea. And he is your father. He can calm the storm. He'll find some way to fix it for you. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Everybody stand, please. Thank you so much, choir. What a blessing. Greetings. I'll tell you, thank you so much. We're going to get ready to worship God in tithes and offerings, and we're going we're gonna to make preparation for tithes and offerings at this time, okay? And so we're glad you're here. We appreciate you. This is a wonderful opportunity to show the Lord that we love him. Let's everybody stand if we can. While you're getting your offering um, ready to give, um, there are some there are some bulletins there are some bulletins left over. Some some of you didn't get one this morning. You could be seated. You could be seated. Thank you. You can be seated. If you don't have a bulletin from this morning. You didn't get one or you need one. Just raise your hand if you need a bulletin. Yeah, we'll get you a bulletin. Yeah, right over here. Thank you so much. We'll get you a bulletin. Right up here. Right up front. Right, up, right here. Okay. On the bulletin, when you open it up, I want you to notice the welcome. And we always want to welcome our visitors. Who's here for the first time? Um, visit Good. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome. Amen. Let's cheer our visitor on. Okay. All right. Always cheer visitors on. First time here. And may you be get a blessing. And thank you so much. We'll get you a visitor's card. We got visitor's cards back there. Thank you. You get our visitor's card. And, and um, if you can um, fill this visitor's card out and put it in the offering plate, I'll appreciate it so much. And when you look on the bulletin there, when you, when you look on your bulletin, you see the times of the services when we be faithful throughout the week. And then we have some upcoming meetings coming and hard to believe, 911. And let's never forget, that's right, lest we forget the sacrifice of those that died to save others and for freedom this week, okay? Let's take time to pray for those families that lost loved ones during 911 and educate the young people that were not born when that happened. And thank God for our freedom today. So take time out. And just to think about others and pray for them. 
and pray for um, our police officers. Pray for our, our fire department, ambulance, and people that God has put in our pathway in life to be a help to us and an authority. And thank God for, for America. I love America. I love our country. And I still believe it's the greatest, the greatest place in the world. And got the greatest, wonderful servants of God that love Jesus around this country. And we're going to have mercy upon our country. And we're going to ask, we're going to ask God for mercy. And we're going to pray for revival. And we're going to love them. And we're going to preach the truth to them. And I don't want you to give up. Amen. Amen. And God's able to save them. And we got to care enough to pray for them. Amen. Amen. Let's pray a special prayer even right now. Father, for America, have mercy. We're sorry we sinned before you. Have mercy. And God, would you bring a revival? And would you help these people that lost loved ones years ago, 911? And God, I thank you. We thank you for the uh, police officers. And, and we pray that you help them. And we pray that you help the Army, the Navy, and the Marines, and all the military, God. Father, would you please, and would you give wisdom to our president? He needs wisdom. God, would you please open his eyes? God, you're able to help him. We read in the Bible that you had a great, gave a great revival that Jonah preached. Even the king got right with God. I pray our president get right with God. And all politicians, they're not doing right. Lord, we love this country. We thank you for this country. Thank you for freedom. Thank you there's not bombs dropped on our head. And this week when we think about 911, we'll, we'll, we'll hear a lot about it tomorrow. And um, Lord, I pray as we think about what happened, that we'll beg you that you would withhold the devil, fight off the devil that wants to destroy us. And we pray that you turn people to you. In Jesus' name. We thank you for your goodness on us. Thank you, Amen. 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 Wonderful, Amen. wonderful. We're, we're going to get ready to receive our offering. You can text give. You can text give. And Brother Brody's been keeping up with this this morning um, with me. And um, he'll, 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 uh, he'll, um, he'll let me know, okay? Uh, and uh, he'll, tonight, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, a after, after the service, if it, um, after that. Uh, can you can you put your fit, foot down from the, from the? Thank you. I'll put your kick your feet up there on the on the pews. <laughs> Get too comfortable with you. Get your feet on the top of the pew. <laughs> Lord help us. Is that right? We thank we, we're thankful for you. But um, this is the house of God. Amen. We want to have have respect in the house of God. Let church say Amen, friend. Amen. 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 But let me move on, friend. But um, we started this morning and. And we'll get it up, you know. We're going to get something special in the bus ministry here. we got some work done. And, and uh, thank God for the work that's done. And it got that lift fixed on that bus. He spent a lot of hours in that bus. And, and uh, um, thank God for the for the work. Amen. And uh, God's going to help us with it. And $700 plus. And so that's that. And then, of course, uh, on the vans, um, uh, there's some issues there. And so, of course, we... Uh, had to get a battery there and, and got to get some uh, repairs here. See? But we'll see what comes in. But the van, thank God for the bus ministry. Amen? Amen. And it may come in now. He'll, he'll let me know. If not, after the service. We, we've done it before. We rally together. And we'll get these things in. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and the bus ministry. And so um, pray that the Lord help us in this matter. Amen? And uh, we, we definitely want to be a help. And uh, with, with, the, with the bus ministry, we call them wills and mercies. Amen? Amen. Wills and mercies. Amen. My wife got saved through the bus ministry Amen. all these years. And, you know, God bless us with those buses. And, and thank God so much for the, you know, he's helping us pack, pack those buses out. Amen? But it takes work. It takes work. The mechanic, not only did he work on the lift, but he was the gas line broke on one of them. He spent time on the gas line. And there's another issue you know, that he worked on. But it just takes, it, the bus ministry, it takes, it just takes funds, you know. And, and of course, it's not talking about more that we need to get done on, on the vans. And, um, but little by little, we'll, we'll get things done. But at, at least, at least we got a starting, you know, we got the momentum running this morning. And uh, he'll, he'll let me know um, in a little while how it's coming. But after the service, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, 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 we'll get it with the help of the Lord. Amen. And, um, and we thank, thank the Lord 
so much for um, uh, the mechanic that worked on the bus there, and uh, Knoxville Baptist Tabernacle there, and that he's done work for them on their buses. And he, and he, he he's a very hard worker, very, very hard worker, a lot of hours on him. But thank the Lord so much that the Lord helps us with these things. Isn't that right? Thank God for the bus ministry. Isn't that right, friends? Amen. So on the envelope, you can put extra whatever it is. He'll, he'll see it. He's looking for the bus ministry. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Friend, please. I mean, you say ties and offerings. Don't, don't go say, well, here it is, the offering. It, it just try to bypass your tithe. You know, you got to keep the, you got to keep the general fund strong. You got, you got other things going on. <laughs> You got mortgage, you got insurance, you got utilities. You got, it goes on and on and on. Gas. So, friend, <laughs> thank God for him. That's what we'll put it down there. But we got to make sure it ties in offerings. So, you're, you're checking out the offering, the love. Let's stand, please. They, most of you know what I'm talking about. Let's somebody stand, please. We're looking, we're looking to come in the bus ministry. Amen. Amen. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Great. All right, everybody's standing here. Brother Brody's going to come, and, and he'll 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 give you a challenge. We we've done this a, a number of times through the years. We haven't done it in a while, but we're doing it tonight because uh, when I when I see the need, of course, uh, I see I bring it before you people the people. But know it's a blessing. You're able to see those buses this morning. Amen. You're able to see the blessing. You can witness how God is helping us. Amen filling those buses up. Amen. But it takes money to operate. But we have so many obligations. We're striving to get these windows. So many obligations. You got all these regular bills. So many obligations. You know, we got missions. I think the best way we ought to look at this thing is this. If God has helped us to be able to give some extra, we ought to be thrilled that God blessed us that we can help out. Amen. Don't, don't, don't have a bad feeling. Don't, don't, and I don't believe you are, but it, it, just in case there's one person like this, let's, let's don't be that way. Let, let's, let's be thankful that God has been so good to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We wouldn't have nothing if it wasn't for the Lord. Yes, sir. Pastor. And there's people that wish they can give some extra. Amen. Amen. And you watch God do so much in your life. You know, you know, you, you know, when you, when you take care of God's business, he takes care of yours. Amen. All right, Brother Burley, he'll share some things with you. Amen, amen. So we're going to, amen, we might need to lunch out by faith and uh, ask God to increase our faith to give a little extra to the bus ministry. Amen. amen. And uh, amen. the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1, cast thy bread upon the waters. Yeah. Amen. Cast it on the water, for thou shalt find it many days. We need to cast some water, cast some bread, bread money. On the water. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible said, you know, we'll find him in the days. God able to bring it back. You know, you know, the bottom line, what he's saying, we cannot outgive the Lord. We really can't. Um, you'll find him in the days. You step out by faith. You give the Lord. You God is going to bless you. God is going to reward you. You know that. Some of you, many, you've done it many times, and you have seen God just do miraculous miracles in your life. And you've seen God just open doors that you never thought would be open. And so we just want to encourage you to cast on the water. Amen. Uh, with these buses, the will of mercy, we're bringing people in. We uh, packed it out this morning. Uh, this morning, bus, uh, our brother Grandy driving. Praise God for that. That's an answer of prayer. And Pastor Bus, this God been blessing. Amen. So just want to encourage you just to give to the ministry. Give. Amen. I think we need 700. Pray that we be to reach that goal. Amen. At least 700. At least 700. Want to at least get that. Dollars in total. Amen. So let's pray the Lord to bring that in. God can do it. Amen. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless the bus ministry. Amen. We take care of God's bus ministry. God take care of our, our things, our bills, our cars and stuff like that. Amen. He opened doors. So let's pray. Father, bless the night. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being so good to us. And we thank for this wonderful opportunity we have to give tonight. I pray you bless your precious people and uh, provide every need for us. Bless the bus ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, friends. I, I, I just know that the Lord, we've done this a number of times. God's people has always rallied together. I looked at so many things we, we got done around here, and um, we can start naming things, but God comes through for us. We serve a great God. Let's everybody stand, please, friend. And thank God for you people that pray. Amen. Let's everybody stand, if you will. Everybody stand.
If you can, stand, okay? If you can. I appreciate it so much. We're going to we're gonna have prayer, and, and as the grace angels, and, and they're coming up, and gra the grace angels, you're, they're going to sing, It's Through the Blood. But while, while they're getting ready to come, uh, look, look, what, what you want to do is you, 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 you want to, you, you just, hey, look, you want to get all that God has for you. Amen? Get, get the best. And there I am. And I want you to uh, think about the words. When, when they sing, when they sing, I want you to think about the words, what Christ has done for you, and the sacrifice um, on that cross, and how he's loved you, loved me. Let's love them more. Amen. And let's remember, people are giving. People are giving during this time. You can go to our website, Grace Bible Baptist Church, while they're singing. You can text on our uh, give. Um, you can, there's several ways you can give on the website. Just Grace Bible Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. And you can Google it, or you can just go gbbc.us, and the website's right there. And you can online give. So while they're singing, you can do this, all right? And it's a wonderful time to give to God, you know? And I thank the Lord so much for our online watchers, and they watch and they listen. And some of them send gifts in, and, they, and some of them help. And, and they tithe and they give. And he asked God to bless them. And I thank God that they want, they, want to, they want to be part, you know. You want to be a part, you know. God has been so good to us. And we thank him for it. He takes care of us, friends. He provided all those vans. He provided the buses. And we just go out, and love people, care about people, feed people. And, uh, but the greatest thing about it, God gets glory out of it. Amen. And there I am. Amen. All glory to him. Father, bless these people, we pray. Bless these that sing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Pray for them and listen to the words, okay? In the presence of Jehovah, as I stand before the throne, the accuser of the brethren starts to read the things I've done. As I hear the awful charges, the question fills my mind. Why should I not be put in hell to suffer for all times? It's through the blood. That's all I have to plead. It's through the blood that Jesus shed for me. Not by works of mine, all right. For filthy rags are they, but because. 
because of that old rugged tree hanging on the cavalry that is my only plea is through the blood that is my only plea is through the blood Wonderful. Let's everybody stand, please, if we will. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Thank you for ministering to us. And so, Second, Second Chronicles chapter 25. When you, when you got a ring like that, just back it up a little bit. When you hear that ring, you back it up just a little bit, okay? Had to take that ring out there. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles. That's the pulpit where it says pulpit on it, okay? Second Chronicles. Chapter 25. Brother Burley's coming and reading the scripture here. All right. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 25. We're going to have the scripture reading. And Brother Petri, we'll, we'll sing. And Brother Petri, can't even, we can't even walk without holding, holding God. Hey, God's got to hold our hand, Brother Petri. Amen. We need him this week. Amen. We can't even walk without God holding our hand. Isn't that right? Amen. Hold our hand. Amen. That's right. Second Chronicles. Chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Brother Burrow's going to read verse 21 by himself. And you're going to read every other verse with him. Okay? And let me try to help you stand. Okay. If you're a young man and, and you're sitting down, um, take, would you look up here? Take, take your hoodie off. Take your hoodie off and take the thing out of your ear. And stand. And Chris, I want you to stand beside him, not him in back of you. I want you to, I want you to sit next to him. Next to him. Have some respect. You should be standing right now. Open the word of God. Open up the word of God. Open up the word of God. Stand respecting God's word. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles 25. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Verse 21 through 28. Thank you, Brother Brooks. Okay. Uh, Second Chronicles, chapter 25. Okay. Chapter 25, uh, verse 21 through 28. Okay. 21 through 28. And uh, we'll read these verses responsibly. I'll read the first verse, and uh, you read the second verse, so on, all the way down to verse 28. <clears throat> So Joash, the king of Israel, went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah, king of Judah, and Bethshemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash, the king of Israel, told Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jeho Jehoshaphat, and Bethshemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim and to the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with over them and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, the son of Jeho Jehoahaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of, of the king of Judah and, and Israel? Now at the time that Amaziah did, did turn away from following the Lord that made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lashish, but they sent to Lashish after him and slew him there, and they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of thy word tonight. Once again, we pray you bless us, dear God. And Father, we pray you speak to every heart, Lord, thy word. I pray you feel the power of the Spirit of God, give him power. To preach the word of God tonight, Lord, I pray that you save souls and change lives tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I thought I can do a lot on my own. I thought I can make it all alone. I thought I could feel all life sinking sand, but I can't 
can't even walk without him holding my hand. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. The mountain is too high and the valley is too wide. Because I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I thought I can do a lot on my own. I thought I can make it all alone. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without him holding my hand. No, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. The mountain is too high. Because I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Since I trust Jesus as my all in all, without him I can't do nothing, without him I'll fall. And since I trust him, I'll be less than a man because I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. The mountain is too high and the bad Because I can't even walk. No, I can't even walk. You know I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Thank you, Brother Petrie. God bless you. Thank you. Second Chronicles chapter 25, the downfall. Wow, the uprising, the rising and fall of King Amaziah was 25 years old. And Second Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 1, 25, 25 years old. That's what we're talking about tonight, this great rise and fall of this king. I love reading the scriptures, don't you? Don't you love reading? The, oh, you know, um, what's, what's more exciting than any movie, if you can just meditate, you could just visualize what was taking place back, 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 <laughs> back then, and we apply it today. God shared the things they went through, and there's so many lessons. Twenty-five. You know, the young ladies will tell you today it's just it's sad. You know, uh, many of uh, twenty-five-year-olds, but but thank God there are some, and I thank God for them. I thank God for them. You know, um, really. Um, some of them, I, I do believe, can be, be president of the United States of America. Um, um, some, some are that. They're, they're that mature. But uh, many of young ladies would tell you to find somebody mature that, that's strong. And um, man, the devil's attacking manhood today. He's attacking manhood, you know. 25 years old. 
has sad to say, a lot of them playing games and and uh, I don't know if you already know what they, they need to get serious with life. They need to get serious with life. You know, people failing in their education and they're and then just wasting time and wasting talent and um, Satan's out to destroy. That's all I got to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Twenty-five year old to be king. That's that, that's 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 a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. That God bless you. You can imagine twenty-five years old being the president of our country, or 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 who knows of a kingdom of a kingdom. Amen. You know, be king. You see, God bless. He's so merciful. He's so great that I'm sure congratulations to him and, 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 and thank God, mama, mama, thank God for mama. And, and verse one, and its mother's name was Jehonan of Jerusalem. Thank God for mama. That's encouraging to see, you know, to see um, positive, your, you know, you, you love your own, you know, but to see them be blessed and to see them mature and to see them become president or king that, the king, Mama. Thank God for Mama. I always said, you know, I, I, I don't like it when Daddy's heart's broken. I don't like it when, you know, that happens. And But I, I just don't understand why would some of these kids want to break Mama's heart? I mean, his, his downfall in chapter 25, you, you see his downfall here. It, it's, it's, it's sad. It really is. The Bible says right here in verse um, 23, and Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah. Look at verse 23. The son of Joash, the son of, um, um, look what it says here. Uh, read it here. The son of Joash, the best, uh, the best of and, and brought him to where? To Jerusalem. And break down the wall. Broke down the wall, friend. We're going to see about the, we're going to talk to some about the, you know, this week, you know, 9-11, the Twin Towers, the, 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 the Twin Towers falling, and, you know, and, uh, what happened to America, and you remember Pearl Harbor was, uh, you know, what happened, and um, you see what's happened to Ukraine, and, but I, I thank God we, we, to God's grace, you know, it, 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 <laughs> it could be bad, it, it could be bad, but that's what happened to him. See, he lost that power, he lost that blessing, he lost that freedom. You see, look, 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 keep keep up with me. Keep, keep 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 up with me, friend. Here, if you will, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the what? Took all the gold and the silver and all the vessels that were what? Found in the house of God. What a tragedy! With Obed Edom and the treasure and the treasures of the king's house. Wow, the hostages also. It, it'd be like. China coming in and just taking us, taking, taking our pulpit, and taking whatever they can take, like the lights, like the piano. They take it, start putting you in chains, putting us on planes, and sending, sending us to Russia or somewhere. It's a tragedy, and especially if you were king, especially if you were in charge, especially if God blessed you. Amen. So you're supposed to be protecting the people. Isn't that right? Well, um, I'll keep, keep, up, keep, up, keep up with me here. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Joaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Wow. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last. Behold, are they not written in the book of kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah, verse 27, did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem. And he was. He fled to Lachish, but they sent to Lachish. They sent to Lachish after him, and they what? They slew him, they killed him. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. What, sa what, what, what sadness? What sadness? Go, we're talking about the rise. We're talking about the rise, the blessings upon Amaziah. And we're talking about the fall, the rise and fall of this king. 25 years old. Verse 2, it says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? But, uh-oh, some of you don't have perfect heart. You're not paying attention. No, no, you're talking. You, uh -oh, you're talking. You don't have perfect heart right now. You're talking. 
Thank God you're doing what's right in the sight of God being in church, but you're talking during the sermon. Ask God for a perfect heart. When you play, thank God, you're in the house of God, you do right in the sight of God, but when you're playing with your phones in the house of God, it's not with a perfect heart. Put something into it. Say amen. Nod your head. Respect the man of God. The rise, the blessing. Think about how good God's been. Amen. Ask God to give you a perfect heart. Amen. Allow you to be a king. Give you a job. Amen. Give you money. Amen. Put you in the king's palace in God's name. Let's do it with a perfect heart. Amen. Amen. Not a slothful heart. Amen. Amen. Not a wicked heart. Not a deceitful heart. Amen. Tonight, you got people doing right. Not with a perfect heart. I wish everyone could be able to hear and be here to hear the Bible training, the wonderful truths, and to be here present and to be here and to glean from these nuggets of wisdom that God's given you during Bible training. But what a tragedy. There's so many not with a perfect heart and a caught up to them. We catch them. We love them. That hurts. We'll pray for them. We'll love them. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him. God's so good to him. They slew his servants. They had killed the king, his father. Man. He slew not their children, thank God, but, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers. But every man shall die for his own sin. Look at verse 5. Moreover, the Amaziah gathered uh, Judah together and made, look what, made, made them captains. Look at this. Over thousands. Look at this man. And captains over hundreds, according to the house of their fathers throughout Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them. Look at this. From 20 years old, th this leader, this leader, being a leader, 20 years old and above, and found them 300,000. Do you know how many people 300,000 people are? How many people went to UT game? What? What? One hundred thousand? This is one. One hundred thousand. <laughs> Three more big old football stadiums. <laughs> you got guys today, twenty-five years old. Many of them can't even keep a marriage. Some of them can't even take care of their own little kids. They have. <laughs> Three hundred. We got responsibilities. 300,000 choice men, verse 5, able to go forth to war. That could handle what? Spear and shield. <laughs> check this out. Check this out. Verse 6. Check, 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 check this out. Check, check out the, 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 the businessman. Think, look at the businessman. He hired also what? <laughs> he need to go help. He need to help Biden. He need to help Biden. <laughs> when he was right. <laughs> Not when he started getting, when he started messing up. <laughs> you know what? Right? You know right? Help help him. Biden Bidenomics. <laughs> That's another story. We gotta move on. You know right, friends? He hired also 100,000 mighty men of valor out of Israel for 100 talents of silver. Look at verse 7. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel to wit with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go do it, be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God hath power to help and to what? 
and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I've given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, the Lord is able to give thee what? Much more than this. And then Amaziah separated them to wit. The army, thank God he listened at that time. I wish he just kept on listening. You know what? Then Amaziah separated them to wit. The army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah. And they returned home in great anger. Stay, listen, you that are being faithful tonight, stay faithful. Don't listen to what people say. Don't bow down what people say. Listen to the man of God. And listen to me. If he would have kept on listening to the man of God, he could have saved his hide. He could, listen, there was a time that he was humble. There was a time that he listened. And, but but you're going to read the rest of this chapter. He went after false gods, and he got weak, and, 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 and he died. Our heart is broken tonight of so many people that uh, they doing right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. It's going to cost them their marriage. It's going to cost them their life. Oh, listen, please don't think I'm centering anybody out, just preaching against somebody tonight. Please don't think I'm preaching at you. I'm loving you. I'm telling you. Amen. Just like the rise and fall of Amaziah, I can tell you stories of people that had the blessings of God. There's a time that he listened. God's able to give you much more than this. I've invested in this. You don't know how much money I put into it. And the man of God said, listen to God. Amen. And thank Amen. God he listened at that time. Amen. 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 And God blessed them. Amen. He blessed them. God hath power to help in verse 18, and he hath power to cast down. God has power to give you that job. God has power to take that job. That's right. Amen. That's right. God has power to give you good health. God has power to bring bad health. Yes. Yes, sir. God has power to give you strength to walk. God has the power to make you cripple. You better learn to honor your mother. You better learn to honor your dad. You better learn to obey your mother. I'm telling you, friend, you better read your Bible. There's a time where God, I'm telling you, I love you. I don't want something crazy happening to you. Amen. Amen. That's your mother. Amen. Amen. That's your daddy. Amen. 25 years old being king. 25 years old being rich. 25 years old being wealthy. Had I a king, a palace. Yet he let the stinking false gods, he let the stinking world, he let people mess him up. Because he didn't want to be a strong leader. You make sure you be a strong leader. Men uh, being attacked by the devil today and, 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 and they're chasing after some woman and a woman should be chasing after them. Somebody say amen. They're being attacked with their manhood. Leaders, the husband ought to be the head. Amen. Amen. Just like Christ, the head of the church, the wife's supposed to submit. Amen. 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 Manhood is being attacked with drag queens and feminism, with hairstyles and ladies' jewelries. Satan's doing anything. It, he can do, he's doing everything in his power to try to weaken your manhood. Earrings right. on, on your ears, guys, like a bunch of little girls. Come on, Amen. Like ladies. Quit talking. Be a leader. Amen. Be a leader. Amen. Verse 9, and Amaziah said to the man of God, Amaziah said to the man of God, but what shall we do for these hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, the Lord is able to give me much more than this. You say, man of God, you don't know how much I spent on this rap music. God's able to give you more than the stick and money you spent on your...
you know how much money I spent on this pornography and all these stinking wicked stuff. God's able to give you much more money and to give you more of the blessings than the stinking pornography. Give you, you don't know how much money you say, man of God, that I spent on the liquor and on the dope. I said, take the stinking alcohol, pour it in the stinking toilet, pour it, get the stinking sink drunk if you have. God's able to give you much more money than this. Said, but preacher, hey, I'm a man, and you're preaching against earrings on my ears. I like girly stuff, and she likes girly stuff. Well, God made you a man. He didn't make you a stinking girly girly. He made Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. You said, but preacher, I love my fag tag. I love my fag tag, my tag of hair, looking like a girl. I tell you, God said, I made you a man. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. It's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame. You're a dear lady, you say, but preacher, you don't know how much I spent on my pants. You don't know how much I spent on my pants. They look at they're cut. You can see my knees. You can see my legs. You can see my flesh. Look like a stinking beggar poor person with ragged, raggedy stinking pants. You say, you don't know how much I paid for those pants. God's able to give you much more than this. Amen. 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 Until you girls, until you ladies, get it in your heart with a perfect heart. You walk in McDonald's and your ladies' room has a dress and a skirt. You walk in Burger King, the ladies on the door have a dress and a skirt picture. That's helped me. It's helped me. Hey, if that thing's helped me not going in there. That's helping me. They got more sense than some pastors. They got more sense than some preachers' wives. Are you listening to me? God said it's an abomination to sight for a man wears a woman wears a woman where a man wears in the Bible. Morally, those things never change. I know those ceremony. I know those some crazy things you may read in your Bible. But morally, I'm talking about moral laws. I'm talking about God says it's an abomination. He is not into this stuff. These boys looking like girls. These girls looking like men. We are having more ladies. We are having more men like Amaziah in the downfall of our country. In the 50s, do you wouldn't see girls walking around with pants. In the 40s, you wouldn't see girls walking around with pants. In the 30s, you wouldn't see girls walking around with pants. And it didn't happen to the Hollywood influence started in the rebellion. Just like the drag queens are flowing. Just like the, the, the lesbians and the homos and, and the tattoos and, and the earrings on the guys. And, and it just, it, God said, don't follow a multitude of the evil. We got so many ladies now doing right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. Come on. You just wait till these guys start wearing more dresses. You just wait till these guys start wearing more skirts. You just wait till they're football players and basketball players and they're wicked at and they already got the speaking celebrities flipping out. God's able to give you much more than this. Amen. Amen. There was a day, independent fundamental Baptist, a preacher would get up and preach the way I'm preaching. Amen. They were the ones, many of them with standards, where the girls had modest skirts and modest dresses. I'm not talking about the ones looking like whores. I'm not talking about the ones looking like sluts. I'm not talking about the ones looking like street walkers. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about that. Look like somebody's about to buy them with their high heels on. And now we go, here we are at the fair. Here we are at the fair. The apostolic. She, the girl from the apostolic, has a skirt. Leggings under there. Covering her flesh. 
I'm talking about apostolic. One that uh, believe you can lose your salvation. I'm talking about apostolic. That messed up maybe on tongue speaking or, or women pastors and women preachers. Bringing in worldly music with Christian words. Put a shame to some independent fundamental Baptist so-called. It was a time when you told people you're independent. You're fundamental Baptist soul in the church. It was a time that they knew what you're talking about. I mean, they knew that most of the ladies wore dresses and skirts, bodice. They knew the pastor's wife wore them skirts and dresses. said, Pastor, what's the big thing? I'll tell you what the big thing is. It's holiness. I'll tell you what the big thing is. It's perfect heart. I'll tell you what the big thing is. Amen. It's being more like God. Amen. And it does matter on the outside. Amen. It's called holy garment. Now you got independent fundamental Baptist words sticking tights and leggings, showing the figures of their body. Disgusting. Disgusting. You got these girls with little short shorts on, showing half their behind. You say, you don't know how much I've spent on that bathing suit. You don't know how much I spent on that on them shorts. God gave to give you much more than this. Amen. You don't know how much I spent. I'll tell you, son. You may spend all that money on dope and cigarettes and everything else. God's able to give you much more money than this, and he's able to give you a better marriage. He's able to give you a better girlfriend. He's able to give you a better boyfriend. He's able to get a better husband, a better wife. A wife. And by the way, these husbands better learn to treat that wife right. God will kill him, give, and he'll give, that, he'll give that woman to somebody else. He'll, he'll, he'll give her another husband. On, One better. Amen. 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 He'll kill that wife and strike that wife dead and give her. <laughs> it's happened in the Bible. It's happened in the Word of God. Amen. 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 Brother, sister, when God tells you and I to do something, it's best to obey God. Amen. I just wish Amaziah would have kept that Amen. in him. Amen. We've, we've watched him grow up around here, and we love him. And they become of age. It's scary. It scares me. They were so humble like Amaziah. Now, Dad, that's just your opinion. Mama, that's just your opinion. And Pastor Barnett, he's just a man. Yeah, he's just a man. You're right. But he's the man of God. He's the man of God. Amen. 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 But some of them lose that. And 2 Chronicles chapter 25, but there came, verse 7, but there came, say it, a man of God. They're saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee. The Lord is not with Israel to wit, with all the children. You, 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 you listen, he said, you better listen to me. And I, I thank God he listened. But later on, he messed up. Keep listening. Amen. Don't lose that humbleness. Amen. Listen to your mom and dad. We love you. Amen. Ain't nobody going to love you more. <laughs> it's, it's your pastor that loves you. Amen. It's your Amen. dad. That's your mom. Amen. But I see him grow older. I try to remind you, especially the burly kids. Yeah, he's just a man. But you got a man of God. It's very dangerous not to listen to him. I say to the precious Barnett kids, I love them. But it's very dangerous. You say, that's daddy, and we're glad. I'm glad I'm daddy. Brother Burley, he's glad he's daddy of his kids. I'm glad I'm daddy of my, of my kids. But you have something special. You not only got a daddy, but you have a man sent from God that walks with God, that prays, Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's been serving God Amen. longer than you've been living. 
But you know, Pastor, I know somebody didn't listen to you, and I'll tell you what, um, uh, look at what, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful. I don't wish evil on nobody, but their life's not over. Their life is not over. It's not over till it's all over, friend. Well, don't forget that. And I want the best for them. And I don't wish ill on any of them. But I know one thing. When you go against the man of God, I never see where it goes right the way it's supposed to. Amen? If the man of God's trying to get you to do right. Amen? Are you understanding that? And I do believe sometimes God is graceful and he's merciful. And I thank God. We want that. You know, sometimes it's not God's perfect will, but God's permissive will. He lets things happen instead of all the junk with that garbage that could happen and the judgment and the, and the ruin. Sometimes God sees their heart and he does some things that, you know, we want that. It wasn't the best. They could have avoided some things, but it could have been a lot worse. Amen? Amen. But it's always best to listen to the man of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That points you in the word of God. Amen. Amen. It says, hey, 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 <laughs> you, you, this is what God said. Amen. This is what God said. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I, I'll tell you, uh, Ephesians 4.12, you know, you have the evangelists and teachers and pastors and all that God blesses different things in the local church, but it's for the perfection of the saints. And for the work of the minister. Amen. Amen. It's for the perfection of the saints. Amen. Amen. For the work of the ministry. God's perfecting you. Amen. That's the man of God. Amen. To help you. To love you. Amen. 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 And so I want you to look at uh, chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. We're talking about the downfall and the rise of Amaziah. Look what the Bible says here. And Amaziah, look what it says here. And verse 10, then Amaziah separated, separated them to wit, the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. Wherefore, their anger was what? Greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home with a great anger. Friend, there's times, your pastor, I'll be honest with you. Listen, there's pressure. But you know, on the serious side, I'm glad I listened to God. And you know, you, you, some of you don't understand. It's so much easier to be an ear tickler, a liberal. It's so easy not to fight. It's so easy just to give in. Just wear your bitches, girls. Wear your pants. Wear your shorts. Go out a little bit. Get, get all half naked on the beach like Biden and put your belly in the air. <laughs> what? Is it? It's, it's, it's a lot easier not to have to preach against this stuff. Is it? It's easy to smoke your cigarettes, drink your liquor, fornicate, adulterer, do whatever you want to do. It's easier not to fight. You don't like getting people mad. Amen. <laughs> you know, I wish Amaziah would have stayed that way. Amen. But he, he yielded. That girl will lose her virginity. That boy will lose their virginity because maybe one of them get mad. That's right. The purity. That boy would take the drink, the girl would take the drink, the dope, or whatever it is. <laughs> they got now stuff, they got drugs that just take a little bit of it, kills them. Quick death. This man trying to please the friends, trying to please the crowd. Nobody's loved you like mama, nobody's loved you like daddy, nobody's loved you like your pastor, but yet they'll choose the wicked crowd. Amen. We scream and we holler. We're going to keep screaming and holler. We're going to keep loving you. When the devil's messing with you with hairstyles and messing with you looking like girls with all the jewelry all around you looking like girls or walking like a girl, talking like a girl. We're going to preach. Be a man. Be a man. With old sticking drag queens trying to get you. And that old drag queen, that sticking homo, he likes your hairdo looking like a girl. He wants a picture behind. That old sticking queer, that old sticking homo, like, likes you when you're little, when you when you're your little tight stuff and he starts rusting after you. Got How wicked got a commercial. Oh, 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 faggot queer like. Homo man. He's checking him out. Smile at him. I wouldn't want another man to smile at me, checking me out, looking me up. 
We love sinners, we love people, but we hate the stinking wicked sin. We love them. We bring them here. We preach to them. We want them saved from hell. We want them to get victory over the devil. We want them to be changed. We want God to help them. God can make them to be a man, that he is a man. God can help that lady to be the lady she's supposed to be. Even though that stuff's messed up in their mind, just like a drunkard and dope, God can clear their mind. Amen. God can help these boys. That's what Sunday school's all about. That's what Sunday night's about. Amen. That's what Sunday morning, Wednesday evening, teach the Bible, teach the Bible. Amen. Amen. Peer pressure. Let me hear you say peer pressure. And that's the very reason. That's the reason why we're seeing what we're seeing. I want God to bless you. I want God to use you. Look at verse 14. Look, look at the downfall of this, of this young man. Coming from king, being strong. Look at the weakness in verse 14. Now it came to pass, after the Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to his gods. Wow. Look at verse 14 and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Look at verse 15. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was what? Kindled against Amaziah. And he sent him a prophet which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of the... I don't understand it. He had a great victory. God fought for him. He won. Now he's yoking up with this thinking devil's crowd and he's getting weak. God gets angry and his life gets destroyed and God has to take him out of this world. Stay strong, young man. Stay strong. You grew up in a Christian home. Stay strong. You went to a good Christian college. Stay strong. You, you've been under my assistant pastor, the preaching, the teaching, the pastor's wife. Young girl, stay strong. He started off doing right, but not with a perfect heart. Not with a perfect heart. You go back to his rise in 2 Chronicles chapter 25. In verse 2, he did that which is right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I love you. It's going to get you. It's going to get you one day. I'm telling you one day, your hair is going to be like a stinking girl. You're going to walk like a girl. You're going to talk like a girl. God made you a man. You're going to look like a girl. If you're not that way, stop trying to look that way. The same thing with a girl with a boy. You got to do God knows the heart. God, God knows the heart. He knows what you're thinking. I don't know everything in your heart. I don't know what you're thinking. But Brother Burley, let me tell you something. We're going to keep on loving, keep on preaching, keep on don't, don't let up. Sister Barnett, don't let up. Sister Patrice, don't let up. Just warn them. That's all you can do. Because I'm telling you, one day, if they don't, they don't get that corrected, that perfect heart, they're going to end up divorced, not a perfect heart. They're going to end up with a wrecked relationship, not with a perfect heart. They're going to unnecessary heartache, unnecessary hurt. Well, God has to take them out of this world, and we love them. We love them. It's going to be a premature death. It's going to be a premature sickness. They're going to let me. I, he said, ah, you don't, preacher. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something, friend. It's not on their time. It's God's time. It's not on their time. There's time that God gave space to Amaziah. God warned Amaziah. God gave money to Amaziah. God gave power to Amaziah. God gave houses to Amaziah. God gave transportation to Amaziah. Amaziah had anything a young person could want. He... Young people would die to be the king that he was. The money, the popularity. It's not with a perfect heart. I'm telling you, it's not with a perfect heart. I am telling you, it's not with a perfect heart. Talking during a sermon is not with a perfect heart. 
Sleeping during the sermon is not with a purpose. You're doing right. You're in the house of God. You're doing right. You come to Sunday school. You're doing right. You get back on Sunday night. Hey, you're doing right. But if you go in your car and listen to wicked music, it's not with a perfect heart. If you got bad company in your car and you're hanging with them, a companion of fools is going to be destroyed. If you're dating the wrong girl or you're dating the wrong boy, it's not with a perfect heart. I don't know how many of them started off right and a girl took them away and a boy or a husband and wife. I'm going to tell you something. There are pastors that have fallen and crumbled in the hands of the devil because they were doing right in the sight of God, but on the side, pornography. God's going to reveal things. He's going to reveal things. Yeah, smoking dope, drinking liquor, it, it'll come out. It'll come out. It's sad when it happens. Jails are filled with them. Prisons are filled. Christian schools and Christian colleges and good homes. But it doesn't have to be that way. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. And Amaziah, verse 17, king of Judah, took advice and sent to Joash, the son of Joash, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, come, let us see one another in the face. Try to pick a fight. Try to pick a fight, friend. Let's see face to face. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, <laughs> he gives some examples and illustrations, try to warn him. You know, throw some illustrations out there. Look at verse 20. But Amaziah would what? Look at verse 20. Amaziah would not what? He would not hear. For it came of God that he might deliver him into the hand of their enemies. Because they sought after the gods of Eden. The downfall of King, King Amaziah, the downfall, You know, it's the same pattern. They don't listen. They won't hear it. I mean, mother's trying to warn them, ain't going to hear it. Dad's trying to warn them, ain't going to hear it. Man of God gets up, ain't going to hear it. I, it's your opinion. It's, it's your way. It's my life. He just wouldn't hear it. Verse 22, and Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fed every man to his hand. And Joash, the king of Israel, verse 23, and Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoshaphat, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to where? Jerusalem. And break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 100 cubits. Took all the gold, took it all that stuff. Look what it says here. All the treasure, king's house, the hostages also. Verse 25, and Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel, 15 years. 15 years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, I've now written the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Now after the time that Amaziah, look at verse 27, now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he what? He fled to Lachish, but they sent to Lachish after him and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers. Sad way to die. Brother Burley and I, we've been working together all these years and he, as my assistant pastor. 
He remembered the days I get up and warn him. Hey! I warned them when they were juniors and they're teenagers. Now it's come to pass. Some of them were in their twenties. Some of them were in their thirties. Some of them were in their forties. I got up and screamed and yelled and tried my best to warn them. Make sure you get that perfect heart. I screamed and yelled and listened to the man of God. I cried, I wept. We're burying them now. We're burying them. You say, Pastor, how did they die? Oh, they didn't die on the battlefield. You say, how did they die? They didn't die serving God. You say, how did they die? Unnecessary hurt, unnecessary heartache. Some of them are talking right now. Some of them are talking right now. Don't have a perfect heart. I love you, but not with a perfect heart. There's no amens. There's no hallelujahs. If I asked you to break down Second Chronicles, what I preach tonight, you couldn't tell me half of what I'm talking about. You couldn't tell me half of what God's trying to tell you. Look at the girl. Look at her. She's destined. She's destined to get pregnant before she's married. She's destined to catch some stinking uh, sexual transmitted disease. She's destined so some boy to stink and abuse her. She's destined. Well, my assistant pastor had to tell him this morning, and then these young kids, you're destined to the jails, you're destined to the prisons, you're destined to the wreck life. Why? Because he knows they're not doing it with a perfect heart. They're doing right in the sight of God by getting on that bus and coming to this church, but not with a perfect heart. They sit there and talk, they sit there and laugh, they sit there and scorn, and they act like stinking heathens. They don't know how to act right in the house of God. We need to do it with a perfect heart. Amen. 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 Yes, sir, is that good? Went across the street today. They speak Spanish over there. I don't know if they speak English. But one of them spoke good English. I said, I'm so glad you could help me. Our neighbors, our neighbors, those are our neighbors. Be kind to our neighbors. Be nice to them. And I took my time out. I said, I need to go over there. They're new neighbors. He spoke English. He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He knew how to talk. Yes, ma'am. You know what I have? You know what I have respect. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Are you listening? And we got so many of them know to do right to say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. But I go to the prisons, and they say yes, sir. Mama taught him right. Yes, ma'am. I love them. We'll always love them. They've done some bad things. I'm getting letters right now, bad things. They never thought they would do it. You say, what happened, Pastor? Oh, they did right in the sight of God. There's time they said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you're right. But deep down in their heart, boy, I like that club. That punk, the way he dresses and looks, that whoremonger, I like him. I like her. I like that life. That seems more fun. And in their secret place, listening things in the ear, watching things in your eyes, like King Amaziah, it catches up to him, where he's taken as a prisoner, as a hostage. And all the freedoms he had, all the freedoms he had, he lost. 
and he became a slave. Yeah. Satan is a liar. Don't listen to the wicked crowd. He says you are in chains and bondage by standards and teachings and strict things of your pastor, your daddy, your mama. Why don't you be free? Why don't you just go on and be free? Why don't you go do your, do your thing? And they go do their thing. And now they're in bondage of sin, many of them. Liquor, drugs, worldly things, pornography. So many committing suicide, so many ending their lives. And I beg you, young people, I just keep saying it to you. God will forgive you. God will help you. He'll use you, he'll use you if you let him. Don't, don't take your life. Don't take your life. Don't do that. God's a forgiving God. God will use you if you let him. Isn't that right? Amen. If you let him. Amen. Verse 28, we're going to close. They brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. A sad, sad day. Sad day. Very sad. I beg you, young people, don't do your mother that way. Don't do your dad that way. Don't do your preacher that way. We'll always love you. But you don't know how my heart aches. You say, Pastor, it shouldn't matter to you. They left. They did their own thing. But I never wanted them to die that way. I really believe that they would have been living, serving God with the blessings of God on them. So many of them. But yet there's so many that chose the right way of serving God. And look how God's blessing them. Amen. We're going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to beg you tonight to ask God to help you to have a perfect heart. Ask God to help you have a You say, how do you get the perfect heart, preacher? You got to meditate Genesis Revelation. Amen. Some of you, you don't know. Where are you at in your Bible reading? Where are you at? Where are you? When's the last time you picked it up and read it, meditated on it? Amen. Got to spend time alone in the prayer closet. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're going to do it with a perfect heart, now confess your sin and ask God to forgive you. Amen? Got to do it with a perfect heart. Isn't that right? Okay? Now, she's got some sickness. She's got some illness back there. Um, what, 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 if God, what, what if God says, you want to know what? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you what she has tonight. We're going to pray for you. You're, at least you're in the house of God. At least you want to be here. At least I didn't have to get on to you about talking during the sermon. I wonder what's more aggravating to God. Somebody playing with their phone? Somebody talking? Blowing bubbles? Or her problem with her throat? I wonder once really funny to God. I wonder who's that stupidness God say. Not listening to the man of God. And you have no idea how it's going to catch up to you. I'm preaching this way because I love you. We don't want to go to a funeral that's premature. Somebody's dying because of something they did in secret. God gets us on his time, not ours. It could be a heart attack. It could be a car wreck. It could be a drive-by. It's in his hands, not ours. This could be some disease. But God will deal with us on his time. But I want you to think about mama. Second Chronicles 25 says that was his mother. That's her name. What's your mother's name? 
how deceitful and wicked for a brother or sister to look at mama. Says, I don't care. I'm doing what I want. I look at their daddy, their pastor, their sister pastor. I'm going to do it my way. How deceitful is the devil? And I preach this way because I love them. They have no way to understand unless God opens their eyes to see where they're headed. Sin is destructive. Satan is destructive. God's anger with this king is angry with young men today that are 25. Like him that he's blessing right now that are 25. In their 20s. But you're going to have to be a strong leader. Amen. Amen. Strong leader. Amen. Amen. Where some woman got some guidance. Amen. Amen. Direction. Amen. That's what these ladies want, somebody to lead. Amen. I'm going to talk about she wants a real man. man that will follow God and listen to the man of God. Amen. Isaac was so humble and submissive. I'm not expecting all you young people to be this way. But he said, Daddy, Mommy, you go ahead and pick the one for me. That's strong. That's deep. But oh God set one to him. He sent the beautiful, submissive Rebecca. Somebody she could follow. God set her to him. Not him, to her. And girls, look up here. One day God's going to send you to some man, some boy. Like he did Eve. With Adam. Amen. Yeah. Help me. Amen. 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 And God blessed them. Amen. And God will bless you. Just stay focused. Don't let the devil mess you up. Amen. And don't listen to people. Amen. You listen to God. Amen. You listen to those that love you Amen. and care about you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. We're going to pray for this dear sister with her throat problem. We're going to pray that God help her. We're going to pray that God help her. And I want you to pray for her. As hard as I've been preaching, this couple has been coming to this church. 